Hello everyone and welcome for this presentation of Odoo View IP. First, the agenda. We'll go through a quick introduction and then we will talk about the advantages of Odoo View IP. We will also cover the integration of Odoo View IP with other Odoo apps. Then we will dive into the initial setup to make Odoo View IP work. And finally, various scenarios and demos. But what is Odoo View IP? View IP stands for Voice over IP. It's a technology that allows to connect internet-enabled devices with the telephone network. It's an essentially to allow for those devices to make and receive phone calls. But in, in the case of Odoo View IP, we will see that it can do much more. You can see Odoo View IP as the client or the user interface. And it requires a View IP host to handle the connection. Any View IP host that provides access to a SIP server via WebSocket is compatible with Odoo View IP. So for example, an asterisk instance that is installed on-premise or online, or also certain third-party hosts like Axivox are compatible. The demo in this presentation will use Axivox, one of our recommended partners. Some key advantages of Odoo View IP. First, it's available worldwide. You can call from anywhere and to anywhere. You can procure phone numbers from various countries depending on where your offices are located, and you can call internationally or domestic. It also has a very high connection quality, especially on international calls. You will not have any disconnection or robotic voice when calling some remote countries. It is also feature rich and flexible. We will see that in a moment in the demos. Odoo View IP also has no lock-in. You get to choose your View IP host, your, uh, your SIP client, and your devices. And here's a list of a few SIP clients and View IP hosts that have been tested successfully with Odoo View IP. Odoo View IP is also integrated with other Odoo apps. Uh, it lists the call activities from any record in any app. So if you have activities in Odoo Project or Odoo Accounting or Odoo Sales, all those activities of type call will be listed in the Odoo View IP widget. And whenever you open one of those activities from the widget, you get to link directly in one click to the appropriate record. In this case, Mr. Customer has a task with a call activity today, and we are able to open that record in one click from the Odoo VIP widget. You can also integrate Odoo VIP with the CRM. In this case, you can add opportunities to your VIP call queue by clicking on the Add to Call Queue button in your Kanban view, but you can also do it in mass with the action Add to Call Queue in your CRM. Odoo View IP is also integrated with Odoo Contacts. Here is what it looks like. When you open the View IP widget and you select an activity or a customer, you can click on the little contact icon in order to display directly all the information of that contact. Odoo View IP is also integrated with emailing functions. When you open the VIP widget and you select a contact or an activity, you get to click on the little airplane in order to send an email in one click right away to this particular contact. Let's have a look at the initial setup and configuration necessary to make Odoo VIP work. First, you will have to install a few apps, the VIP app and the VIP underscore CRM app in order to take advantage of the features I just mentioned. You will also have to specify the information of your SIP server in the Odoo general settings, like on the screenshot. In Axivox or in any VIP host you will be using, you will have to create a user. In this case, I have created a user for myself with the extension 8007. In, in Axivox as well, you will have to link an incoming number to the extension and therefore to the user. So in this case, I have associated the, the following number with my extension. 
Then, in the Odoo user settings, you will have to specify the SIP login and SIP password of your credentials from your VoIP host. You will also have to make some modifications to your browser settings in order to enable push notification. An easy way to do that is to follow the prompts of the Odoo bot in order to enable desktop notifications. You will be able to click on Allow. And as a recap to the right, you can see that you should make sure that your microphone is allowed on your domain wherever you have Odoo VoIP running and your Odoo instance, as well as the notifications and the sound. In case you want to use a handheld device like your own cell phone and that you will be using Zoiper or any other uh, SIP client, you want to specify the uh, SIP server and credentials in the settings of Zoiper, just like on this screenshot. Let's go through demos and various scenarios. First, we'll go through a very simple scenario where I will call a customer. For all of the following scenarios, we will always use the same setup. I am on the left, Fabrice. My colleague Mark is in the middle. And a customer or prospect outside of our company is to the right. So what does it look like when I call the customer? I will use his full number, of course. And I get to get straight in the CRM or any other part of Odoo where there is a phone number. And I can just click on it in order to click to call. It calls the customer, and the customer can answer, and the connection is established. Notice that Odoo knows this customer, and that's why I see his picture and some information related to this contact. Second scenario, the customer calls me. He will use my full number, because that's what he knows about me. And we will see that Odoo will detect this contact, because we already know it in the, data in the database. When he calls, my VoIP widget shows up and the notification shows in the bottom right corner. And I can pick up and the connection is established. The next scenario is a case where I, Fabrice, would call my colleague Mark. In that case, I only have to use the extension if I want to because we are part of the same VoIP domain. I fire up my VoIP widget and I get to enter directly his extension 8343. When I call him, his widget will show up. He has to enable his microphone in his browser and the connection is established. In the next scenario, the customer is going to call Mark and Mark is not going to pick up. It will then revert to me and I will not pick up. And it will then revert to Mark's voicemail. And the reason it's going to behave like this is because there is a forwarding feature that is currently set uh, to forward Mark's calls to me when he doesn't answer. Let's see how that looks like. The customer calls Mark and Mark is not going to pick up for five seconds because that's the current configuration. It then reverts to me, and I'm not the going to The person at up. extension 8343 is unavailable. Please Mark's leave your voicemail. message after the tone. In the next scenario, the calls to Fabrice, me, will ring my personal cell phone with the follow me feature. It is a very convenient feature in case you don't want necessarily to use the Odoo VoIP widget, and you prefer to send all of your incoming calls directly to your own device, like your cell phone, and it's possible to ring multiple devices if you want to. Next, it's the scenario to call a group of multiple operators. In this diagram, which we call a dial plan, we will allow the customer to call a number, and that number is associated with this diagram. It will call a sales group of operators, and if nobody picks up, it will revert to the voicemail. 
This is possible because we have created a user group called Sales with four operators in it, Stephen, Laura, Fabrice, and Mark. And Stephen and Laura are not even connected, so Fabrice and Mark will ring. Let's see how that looks like. The customer is going to call 128, which is just a shortcut that would be otherwise a regular phone number. It rings for both of us, and the moment I pick up, the VIP widget of Mark disappears because the connection is already established with another operator. In the next scenario is the selection menu. We've all heard that. Press 1 for this, press 2 for that. And this is precisely this scenario with a menu that we have configured for an option on the 1 to call the sales team, an option on the 2 to call the support team, and an option on the star key in order to repeat the menu. We also have the option to specify a timeout and what and a scenario of what would happen in case of timeout. We are able to create a message uh, like in the bottom right screenshot with um, voices, various voices, various languages and various accents that we can generate in order to save in the system. Let's hear what it sounds like. The customer for calls sales, a number. Press one for support. Press two to repeat this menu. Press star. He asks to talk to sales, and my and Mark's phone ring. And because I pick up, Mark's widget disappears, and the connection is established. In the next scenario is the dispatcher. It's a way to handle callers based on their number. It is particularly useful if you want to treat customers with different number differently, typically based on their country code or their area code, if they are from a given county or state or country. In this example, we see that the diagram shows a dispatcher that makes a distinction between numbers that are originating from the US and Canada, or Mexico, or Chile, or Colombia, or a specific number from Mr. Customer the customer we know already. For each of these options, we will have a different behavior. In the case of US Canada, it's going to call a, an English speaking support team. In the case of Mexico, Chile, and Colombia, it's going to call a Spanish speaking support team. And in the case of Mr. Customer, because he's a special customer, it's, he's going to call me. In any case, if the operators do not answer in a configurable amount of time, the customer's call will go to the voicemail of the support team. Let's hear it when the customer calls us. Obviously, because it is this customer, it's going to call me, it's the last option, and I get to pick up. In the next scenario is call queues. It's a way to keep the callers on hold until they are assigned to an operator. So we see in the diagram that we have set up a queue for our support team. And in case nobody picks up, it will revert to the voicemail of the support team. And this is possible because we have created a queue called support that has the strategy to call the agents one after the other, starting with the first in the list but there are various strategies available, like for example, calling all available agents, or maybe call random agents, or calling the agent that has the least activity so far. There are three agents in this queue right now, Laura, Mark, and Fabrice, but Laura is not connected. So we will see how that looks like. Customer call is getting up the call and therefore it goes to the next operator in the list which is me and I pick up. In the next scenario is a time condition. It's a way to specify what should be the behavior depending on the time of the day or of the week or of the month. In this example we will specify that the support is only available at night. 
So we have our diagram with the time condition element. And this time condition specifies that it's only true between 7 p.m. and 6 a.m., Monday to Friday, every day of the month, every month. So essentially, whenever the caller calls between 7 p.m. and 6 a.m., that condition will be true, which means that the support team will ring. And if no operator picks up, it will go to the voicemail of the support. But if the caller calls outside of those hours, basically if he calls during the day, then we will just play a, an after business hours um, audio message and then hang up. And we are during the day right now. So let's hear it if the customer calls. You have reached us outside of our business hours. Goodbye. And so he called during the day and it's a night shift support team. Therefore, he heard the message and we hung up. The next scenario is the conference rooms. We can create conference rooms. And in this case, I have created one for myself, Fabrice's room. It has an internal extension of 500 and access code of 12345. And I am the administrator and I need to be in the conference room in order for the conference to start. So let's hear it if Mark tries to connect to my room. He dials 500. Please enter the conference PIN number. He enters the code. You are currently the only person in this conference. And I connect to my room. Please enter the conference PIN number. And we are both in the conference room. The next scenario is the one of the digital receptionist. And that's a way simply to listen to the key presses that the caller enters on his device in order to send him to other extensions or uh, different uh, parties. So in this diagram, we see that we are going to play an enter your party's extension now message and then have the digital, digital receptionist listen to the key presses of the caller. And in the case there is a time of 30 seconds, the system will just hang up. So let's hear it. Enter your party's extension now. We enter, the customer enters my extension whenever the digital receptionist is listening to his key presses. And that's the reason why my VoIP widget rings and I can pick up. The next feature is called blacklist and it's the ability to blacklist certain numbers and treating them differently than the rest of any caller. You can specify an audio message in order to um, handle them differently and provide them with a different uh, audio message. The next feature is related to custom caller IDs. And this is very convenient if you call uh, internationally and that you want to have your caller ID be being different depending on who you call. So typically, if you want to call into the US, you will want to show a US number to your customers. But if you call Mexico, you might want to show a Mexican phone number to your customer. And so that's very convenient in order to create a proximity with your prospects and customers and allow them to call back uh, on a domestic number and still uh, loop them in your whole VoIP system. And finally, an example of what an advanced dial plan combining multiple elements would look like. We've only gone through fairly simple scenarios so far, but you can combine all of those concepts together to make a much larger and more advanced and more elaborate diagram uh, in order to uh, cover every behavior depending on uh, who calls you, when, and for what reason. 
thank you very much for following this presentation and I'm waiting for your questions. Hey guys, welcome. Uh, I'm Matt. I'm here with Fabrice. We're here for a little bit of Q&A. So we want to go ahead and jump right on into it. There were a couple of questions asked in the chat here um, multiple times by people just asking about this, all this functionality that you demonstrated. Is it doable in the Odoo mobile app as well? So yeah, can you answer that for us? That's a great question. Um, you can actually use Odoo VoIP in the mobile app. Um, in fact, if you use it on your phone, it's going to turn into uh, a sort of dialer. Uh, so it's going to take the full screen. So it's a nice interface there. And you can use it the same way as I use the widget uh, in the demos. So uh, you can really just start using it as a soft phone on your phone. Um, and uh, it has the same functionalities. Uh, it's just the interface. It's just a client. Awesome. Awesome. Um, one of the other questions that was asked, I think, towards the end of the, the demo that was showed is um, when you're doing those internal calls, it was coming up as a four digit thing as opposed to the kind of the name itself. And the people were curious if it could actually come up as the name instead. Yeah. Yeah. Great question, too. So in fact, uh, it would sh show who is calling if I had configured the extension or the phone number uh, at the contact level. Uh, so the, I configured it at the user level. You want to make sure that the contact record knows what the extension or phone number is in order for the, the widget to recognize who's calling. Gotcha. Uh, we've got a bunch of questions coming in here, so we're going to definitely dive into as many as we can, but there'll be an extended Q&A after as well, so just keep that in mind. But one of the questions that came in um, was just asking if call recording was available. Um, so I thought maybe you could answer that and then speak to a little bit of the reporting that's available within the VOIP as well. Sure. So uh, call recording is currently not available um, with the uh, Axivox provider, and there's work towards that. But depending on your VOIP host, uh, call recording might be available. Uh, so you have to check with your with your VIP provider. Uh, and in regards with the reporting, actually, it was not in the presentation, but there is reporting available as list views, as uh, pivot and graphs of all the calls that took place and by whom, for what duration, uh, if they were in or outbound, if they uh, connected and what record they were associated with. So you have a comprehensive reporting um, on a phone call uh, object that you can manipulate and filter through. Gotcha. Um, you were talking about some of the recording being dependent upon the provider itself. I know that there were a couple other questions uh, that came in. One just being about linking some other providers like 3CX, um, others being like porting phone numbers across. So can you speak to that a little bit as well? Sure. Yeah. So um, the providers that will be available like 3CX or Ring Central or any other uh, will depend if they provide an access to their SIP server via WebSocket, like I mentioned in the, in the presentation. So you have to check with them if they would be available to provide that access so that you can enter the information in the settings in order to connect to it. Um, from a, uh, the, your, your other question was uh, from a uh, number porting, mm -hmm. that's also something that's related to the provider. Uh, most providers will do that. So uh, the provider that was in the, in the presentation does that. Most of them do, uh, but that's something that's going to take place uh, on the uh, VIP host and, and provider uh, side. Got you. Okay. Um, a couple of the questions came in too, and I don't think it goes back to a similar, you know, just has depends on the provider, but Ring Central is one that people were asking a little bit about. Uh, can you speak to that at all, whether yeah. there's ability to connect there? Sure. So, um, again, you will have to verify if, if Ring Central can provide that access to, to the SIP server via WebSocket. Um, different providers are, are big or small in different territories. So uh, you have to check that. And also, uh, if they are able to provide that access that you can set, set up in Odoo settings, that will mean that you can not only use either Odoo, uh, the widget, or the Odoo mobile app, or a soft phone, soft phone on your phone, or their widget, uh, their page, their, whatever system they have for you to uh, have an interface to their system. So uh, various user interface uh, can be utilized in order to connect to the same system in the backend. Got you. Got you. Um, another quick one here for you. There was just a question about tagging the recording of calls against a task um, in Odoo. Can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah. This, um, so you, I've, you, as you've seen in the presentation, I had a list of activities. And those activities are pulled from every record of any object in any app. And they are listed uh, in the activities. And, and those are activities of type uh, call. So it will work 
um, uh, across all apps and it will always be associated with a record. When I say always, I mean when the, when the, the call comes from a call activity. Aside from that, if you want, you can just make like a free call to someone out of the blue with, with the dialer uh, if you want to. In that case, it's not going to be associated with any record because it's just a free call that you make. Awesome, awesome. All right, well, we'll wrap it up here in just a minute. Uh, Fabrice is going to be available in the extended Q&A as well. So if there's any additional questions remaining, please go ahead and hop over there. Um, but Fabrice, thank you very much for the time for putting it together. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. Hope you're having a great rest of your Odoo experience as well. Thank you, Matt. See you guys later at the, uh, in the link in the chat.